There are those that just want to be left alone. And those that just won't leave them alone. Which one are you? The Ernest Hancock Show. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence of me, Ernest Hancock, and my good friend Stuart Rhodes. Yeah, we're good friends. We'll have dinner tonight. We'll be chilling. But, you know, uh, that doesn't mean we don't get to have spirited debate. You know, and this is the thing. A lot of people don't understand my method. You know, I I, I, I just see the Constitution as another plantation. You now, the Articles of Confederation was better. Declaration of Independence was very clear. I, I have no problem with that. But they, you know, they, they want to get a central bank. You know, that was that was kind of Art Hamilton's thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going, you know, if I can be all kinds of crazy principle libertarian guy, anarchist guy, and, you know, it and be able to argue it principally, it makes Stewart seem more moderate. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like, but I can't get on Southern Poverty Law Center list. You know, Heidi comes on, she says, you know, from the Southern Poverty Law Center, she goes, she goes, well, we don't put you on because we know you want to be. <laughs> and they said they don't put on libertarians for some reason, too. I, and because they need to have um, an enemy that it, it can't really, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what they're afraid of from libertarians, but you consider yourself libertarian. I mean, let's go over your bio real quick. Stuart Rhodes. Founder and director of Oath Keepers. He served as a U.S. Army paratrooper until disabled. And then he uh, was a former firearms instructor and a former member of Ron Paul's D.C. staff. You know, a lot of people may not know that. He used to write for various magazines, you know, like a SWAT magazine and so on. You graduated from Yale Law School. I mean, you know, this is like, you know, so so Stewart's got some skills, you know. So the thing is, is that you're out there advocating and you got a lot of notoriety by coming out and saying, look, if we're going to have this Constitution thing, all right, so let's, let's assume we're going to have some kind of, you know, that there's this contract, this deal. Well, there are people that got shiny badges, uniforms, and guns that take an oath to uphold and defend that document. And you're like, hey, I just want to, you know, like give you an extra opportunity to reaffirm that. Oh, they didn't like that none too much. And I'll tell you what Heidi's problem was. I had her on the show, and she said, well, he, he's saying that, that you know, giving people permission to disobey their president, that was their concern. They want central command. Right. They want absolute obedience. You know, their, their, their opinion is that when they gain power by whatever means, after that, all the <laughs> toys belong to them. And that's the police and military. And so we're messing with their toys. They don't like that. They, they want control. Now the thing that I'm I'm concerned about is is that when you advocate, we go to these. Uh, this is a tour. Now are you traveling around the country uh, with this nullify now thing. Yes. Okay. So you have several cities you're going to. You bet. Okay. Now the goal is that at the end of this, you will have I don't know thousands at least I'm sure of people that will have been exposed to whatever it is that you're going to say. And what is the theme that we're going to what? Well, our main message is that all the all the guys with the guns should not simply follow orders and be blind, obedient uh, tools. That's the main message to them. The message to the rest of the citizens out there is that they should use what they do have, their state governments, to interpose between themselves and an abusive federal government. You know, Mordor on the Potomac is going crazy. So you want to have Gondor there to stand up and say, you know, we're going to defend the line here and stop you from doing this. Doesn't mean you can't have abuse of power in the state. You certainly can. But we do have that. Like Jefferson and Madison, when they saw what happened with the Alien Sedition Acts, clear violation of the First Amendment, right out of the gate, arresting newspaper editors, they went to the state legislatures and said, you have a responsibility to stand up to this and and declare this to be a a null and void act. Let me tell you what's going to be different. I, I tell you, I can see where this is going already. Arizona is in enormous financial debt, more per capita than California. We're the worst in the nation, you know, for a population, you know, divided into the debt. The United States federal government is going to go, carrot, here's your carrot. And you go, we, we want, be in, we're not going to, and we're going to go, carrot, okay? That's what's going to happen. It's going to be blackmail. So, is that being addressed at all? Are you talking to the, you know, the people in your state? You, you, you got Sylvia Allen, which is a senator here. She's a prominent conservative. You know, I'm. Uh, how is she addressing the financial issues? I don't know. I'm from Montana. 
I can talk about Montana. Yeah, no, Montana's so, a good well, example. Well, here, here's, a, here's a good thing to know, is that in Montana, we had a meeting, Oath Keepers called a meeting of all the liberty groups in Montana, and we had 20 legislators there. These are Ron Paul Republicans who were elected in the wake of Ron Paul's candidacy, and they're hardcore constitutionalists and hardcore liberty people. And so they will stand up. So you need more like that who are willing to say, not only will we say no to what you're doing that's a violation, but we don't want your money, and we're willing to deal with that and reject your money also. Uh, well, I know. I know. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> but we're doing it in Montana. It's starting to happen. Well, I, I see a lot of good signs here. I'm just afraid that if you <clears throat> take them from the frying pan into the fire, or you're not, you know, it, it, the concept that you're still going to be under a, a government control. Oh, no, no, it'll be constitutional this time. It'll be better. I, you know, how many reincarnations of this argument do I have to go through? I'm just, I'm just wondering because in my adult life, I see this same argument. In fact, the exact same argument in the nineties, it started in Colorado. It was a 10th amendment thing. They got it passed in one of the legislative branches there. It became a big deal. They came here. The Arizona breakfast club was here. Mm -hmm. They presented it. They talked to legislators. It got introduced here. It was initiatives that were done. We did it in our newspaper system, taking the initiative. We did it. I mean, on and on and on. And, you know, lots of meetings, hundreds of people, same thing. And exactly. Then, and then Bush got elected and it all went away. Right? No, that's my point. Right. You know, it, it always goes away. But there's that third part that's starting to grow who are consistent in their defense of liberty, <laughs> no matter who's in power. They don't go to sleep when they're guys in the White House. That's the conservative, you know, Barry Goldwater, conservatives, Ron Paul Republicans, people like that, Constitution Party people, they tend to be more consistent no matter who's in power. I tell you who gets counted. You know, this is the one thing that I've noticed. The people that they count are the ones that vote that go out and they participate and they're out in the streets and the revolution and that kind of thing. What they never count, and the ones that I always advocate, like you're still voting, you know, are the people that don't vote, the people that just want to be left alone, the people that pull out of the system, the people that advocate, you know, for uh, uh, voluntary exchange in silver, people that are advocating just being, mm -hmm. you know, on the Lone Prairie, going to Free State Project, moving to Wyoming, going to North Dakota, Montana. Right. These kind of people. These are the ones that have a much greater impact and are much more feared by the collectivist than anybody else. Because if you're in the system, they, they can't function without having the counterpart over there justifying their existence. When the people just start going, eh, I, I don't care. I'm over here. I'm doing my thing. What, as soon as that starts to happen... Man, that's when that's when you start having the false flags. That's when you start. We gotta rally the people together again. We gotta have the aliens are invading from Alpha and whatever. Because if you don't, <clears throat> they lose that support from people in the concept of a collective in the government. Yeah. So I'm for building that awareness. This whole next generation. Me too. Me too. I agree. Right. I agree. One of the major points we're gonna make this this next year is that people need to um, decouple themselves from the fiat money system. Sound money, local economies, barter, all those things that are private action. You don't need state action for that. I agree. Walletvoting.com. Walletvoting.com. Go there. You'll see. Walletvoting.com. We knew this was coming. Well, we're going to have some more fun. A lot of the other guys are here, and we'll uh, you know, see who else get a crack at me. We'll be right back here on Declare Your Independence in just a little bit. <laughs> no, we're going for an economic collapse, and so 